As we approach the new year 2025, we can reflect on its interesting properties. To me, its most interesting property is that on the one hand, it's the sum of the first nine positive cubes, one cubed plus two cubed, and so on, up to nine cubed. On the other hand, it's also the square of the sum of the first nine positive integers, one plus two plus three, and so on, up to nine. This means that the sum of the first nine cubes is equal to the square of the sum of the first nine positive integers. This is one example of a famous theorem known as Nicomachus's theorem. One of my favorite proofs of this theorem is a visualization that uses stacks of cubical arrays. In particular, we can look at the sum of the first nine cubes as this stack of cubical arrays where each cube has a side length one up to nine. But now we can take these cubical arrays and lay them down in a systematic way. Each of the cubical arrays can be laid out in an L-shaped gnomon. The odd-sided cubes lay down perfectly into these gnomons, while the even-sided cubes have to have one layer cut in two to fit perfectly. But once we do this, we see that the nine cubes fit perfectly into this square array of unit cubes. But this square array has a side length given by the sum of the first nine positive integers. And therefore, this visualization demonstrates that the sum of the first nine cubes is equal to the square of the sum of the first nine positive integers. It turns out there's nothing special about the number nine. This works if we replace nine with any number n as well, and a similar visualization will always work. Many people balk at visual proofs like this because they think it's not clear for all n values, but it turns out that this diagram does have all the key ingredients so that you could provide a formal proof. That being said, we can also prove this fact using proof by induction. Proving this formula directly by induction is challenging, so we are gonna go through an intermediate step. In particular, we can prove that the sum of the first n positive cubes is equal to n squared times n plus one squared all divided by four, and the sum of the first n positive integers is equal to n times n plus one divided by two. For our inductive proof of the first formula, we let n be an integer greater than or equal to one. Suppose that we have the sum we want for this n, that is that the sum where i ranges from one to n of i cubed equals n squared times n plus one squared divided by four for this particular n value. Then we look at the corresponding sum for the next integer n plus one. Here we have the sum where i ranges from one to n plus one of i cubed is equal to n plus one cubed plus the sum where i ranges from one to n of i cubed. But notice this latter sum is exactly the sum from our inductive hypothesis. That means that we can replace this right hand side with n plus one cubed plus the quantity n squared times n plus one squared divided by four. Now we just have a little bit of algebra to do. First we add the fractions to get four times n plus one cubed plus n squared times n plus one squared all over four. Then we factor out an n plus one squared so that the numerator becomes n plus one squared times the quantity four times n plus one plus n squared. This numerator simplifies to n plus one squared times the quantity n squared plus four n plus four. And now the numerator factors to n plus one squared times n plus two squared divided by four. But this is exactly the formula that we hoped for, since our sum stops at n plus one, and we have n plus one squared times the next number, n plus two squared, all divided by four. Note that we can also check that the formula holds when n equals one, and therefore we've proved by induction that the sum where i ranges from one to n of i cubed is equal to n squared times n plus one squared divided by four for all n values greater than or equal to one. But now we also have the classic result that the sum of the first n positive integers, i equals one to n of i, is equal to n times n plus one divided by two for all n greater than or equal to one. We could prove this formula by induction as well, or we can use this clever manipulation of sums, which is often attributed to Gauss, even though that story seems to be a myth. We start with two copies of the sum of interest and write it as one sum plus the other. The first sum stays the same, while the second sum we read from n down to one. Then, we can add the two sum ends together since they have the same index set, and we end up with the sum where i ranges from one to n of just the quantity n plus one. This value is constant with respect to the index, so we get that this sum is n times n plus one. So we get that twice the sum of interest is equal to n times n plus one. This means that the sum of interest is n times n plus one divided by two. This idea can be traced back to at least the ancient Greeks who used a triangular diagram like this, created a second rotated copy and placed it on top of the first, forming a rectangular diagram. This provides a visual proof of the fact that the sum of the first n positive integers is n times n plus one over two.
Now we join these two facts together. The sum where i ranges from 1 to n of i cubed is equal to n squared times n plus 1 squared divided by 4, but that's simply the square of n times n plus 1 divided by 2, and that's the square of the sum where i ranges from 1 to n of i. When we put the two pieces at the ends together, we get our proof of Nicomachus's theorem. So we have a beautiful visualization and a quote-unquote rigorous proof of Nicomachus's theorem. But let's end the video as we enter 2025 with one last visual representation of the fact that 2025 is the sum of the first nine cubes and the square of the sum of the first nine positive integers. This visualization relies on the fact that equilateral triangle arrays of equilateral triangles form visual representations of squares. So if we take one copy of the first square, two copies of the second square, three copies of the third square, four copies of the fourth square, and so on, all the way down to nine copies of the ninth square, we see that this diagram here represents a visualization for the sum of the first nine cubes. Now let's rearrange the rows systematically. In even index rows, we focus on the last triangle, take the lower left quarter and rotate it about the central side length. This forms a parallelogram shape and allows us to glue the row together to form this trapezoid shape. In odd shaped rows, we rotate every other triangle 180 degrees and that allows us to glue the triangles together to form another trapezoid shape. Again, in the next even index row, we rotate every other triangle except for the very last one, where we highlight the lower quarter triangular array and rotate it about the midpoint of the side length to form a parallelogram. Then we can glue the objects in this row together to form a trapezoid. We can continue doing this on each row. Odd rows, we only rotate triangles. Even rows, we rotate all the triangles except the last one, where we perform this special operation. At the end, we have a large stack of trapezoidal arrays of equilateral triangles, and they fit together perfectly to form one large triangular array. If we look at this triangular array from a rotated perspective, we see that the side length is given by the sum of the first nine positive integers. So this large triangular diagram represents the square of the sum of the first nine positive integers. By rearranging stacks of triangular arrays into one large triangular array, We've seen Nicomachus's theorem again in action for the year 2025. I hope you have a great new year and enjoy a lot of math. If you want more visual proofs about the sum of cubes, check the description for other videos.